Last year, I brought you Wives in Power, women that have made it to the top while juggling their careers and their families. And then I thought to myself, how about those who are running businesses? Is it much easier for them? How do we start and grow thriving businesses while juggling our families? I'm excited that this month I'll be bringing to you Mums in Business. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are still with Mums in Business. They are teaching us so much and today I have an amazing guest with me, the third mom today, uh, Maureen. Welcome hey. to the channel. Thank you, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, so good to have you. Um, and I want you to introduce yourself, tell these guys who you are and what businesses you run. Are you married? Tell us all about it. Wow, Lisa, I'm so delighted to be here mm. today. I'm Maureen Otiek. I am a wife, I'm a mother to three lovely boys. I am a creative director with Motiek Interiors mm. and I'm also a co-founder of Evolving Woman. Mm. Yes. Amazing. So how long have you been in business? I've been in business, business more or less almost all my life. Mm. I've worked with my parents, but uh, specifically running my own, I have been in business since 2008. Okay. Yes. So what does Motiek do? Just tell us all about it. Okay, so Motiek, uh, basically we are an interior deco and uh, service uh, business. Mm. We are located in Nalia and Chiwatule. We have two stores running right now, but our core is to make spaces functional and beautiful. Mm. That's why we like to say we bring life to your space. Mm. So that is residential and commercial spaces. Okay, so you design houses and things like that. Yes. Mm. Why I'm specific on space? Yeah. Because someone may have just a sitting room oh. as a part of a house mm. and that's what they want you to design. Mm. So we come to your space, look at it, give you a floor plan, mm. give you a concept, mm. give you a mood board and then plan to ensure that it is functional yeah. for your family mm. and still remain beautiful. Ah, oh, that's amazing. So I just want to hear from you, how did you start and how did you narrow down to interior deco? Like, did you study it? Was it a passion? Tell us about that. Well, 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 it's been a journey. Mm. I drew this really out of passion mm -hmm. as a person. Um, I've done a number of businesses, yeah. but they all really more inclined to my art as mm. a person. I started off by doing a running a retail shop uh, for about six years. Yeah. And uh, I was dealing mostly in corporate office wear. And then I switched to running a, a photo studio. Mm. And in the photo studio, I was still a creative director. Yeah. So there was passion there. But along the way, those businesses were not working mm. for me as I transitioned into motherhood. Uh -huh. My firstborns are twins. Ooh, so wow. you can imagine. <laughs> yes, <I'm a> <laughs> wow. So you can imagine with what happens when mm. you have twins. I closed my first business when I had the twins mm. because that's when I realized that I couldn't delegate. Yeah. It was dependent on my eye when I would go out to shop. I mm. used to shop from Turkey. Mm. So once I switched that, it became a problem. Yeah. And uh, the pregnancy was a bit difficult. Mm. So I was put on bed rest mm. most of the time, which was very challenging. Yeah. So I closed shop. When I recovered from mm. that first phase mm. when and opened the photo studio mm. i ran that for a while it also became a challenge yeah. uh, my husband is a medical doctor and he was working up country mm. so i would he would be coming in on fridays and i would be zooming out I for know. the weekend yes that became a challenge yeah it really rocked our lives mm. and i couldn't continue with it mm. but all through that time the most consistent thing i used to do one i used to help my friends uh with construction of their homes, homes yeah. I would help with uh, their small rentals, mm. I'd put up uh, some of mine. So I realized there was always that consistent thing mm. until uh, 2018. A brother of mine was working in one of the stores in Dubai, mm -hmm. a home decor store. Yeah. And he realized I had so much passion in this. And I would look at the pieces they would be selling. So I told him, why don't you... Bring some. Just keep sending yeah. me some. Some, just keep sending. So back home, we converted our garage. And he kept sending the pieces. Yeah. He kept sending the pieces. 
my oh my, mm. the response was awesome. Mm. Friends, neighbors, you know, cousins, cousins everyone. <laughs> the home became a shock. Yes. Because what would happen? You pull things out of the garage, your showcase in yes. the sitting room, and the passion grew. The passion mm. grew to a point where we realized, you know what? He had to come back. Mm. He came back and we decided we are going to start this business. This business. Mm. And that's how we bath Motec Interiors. Okay, that's amazing to learn. And as you're speaking, I'm picking out something because you mentioned you became a mom and there is a understanding the seasons that we are in. Because so many times, ladies, I had a poll on Instagram and people were saying, I became a mom, um, it's hard to juggle it all, you know, and I see that you accepted the season you were in and then pivoted and changed. Instead of sticking to that business, you die with it, it's not working for your family, and it becomes a challenge. So I, I really love, I really love that. And as we dive into that, how are you juggling running a business and your family? And you have stock at home. How did you now transition and now take it to a shop? At what point do you realize that now let me take it? So just that whole story about juggling and then, you know, we can learn from that. The juggling was hectic. Mm. I'm one who loves hosting. Yeah. But, well, when I brought so many people, like the business, into our space, we had no privacy. Yeah. We killed it for the family. <laughs> My family was so heavily inconvenienced mm. to a point whereby they would be in the sitting room, I'm showcasing things, I'm doing people this. People jumping over things. People are jumping over <laughs> things. And it also became dangerous because yeah. we deal with delicate pieces. Oh, yes. They are breakable. They are mm. breakables. So we decided, no, it's high time we actually get a location mm. and set up shop, right? Yeah. Mm. Yes. And that's the point where we decided uh, we need to go back to school. Mm. You can't rely on passion alone. It's not enough to actually mm. sustain the business. You so need to learn. You have to skill up. Yes. You need to learn. You need, and we are ongoing. Even right now, we are currently still pursuing our diplomas with yeah. my business partner mm. and we keep skilling up skilling up mm. skilling up oh wow yes. yes i think that's very key because sometimes we want to drive on only passion i am passionate about it but things are always changing but you need to know the key things and study so that you become an expert in that area that's amazing and you you, you talk about having a partner yeah what are some of those things because sometimes we can't do business alone we need support and help. But then we're trying to identify partners. What are those key things that you can share with the ladies here? If I want to get a business partner, what will make it right? One of the things that I have seen mm. is one key thing is the values. Uh -huh. You need to have similar values. Mm. I think that has been our strongest strength, yeah. really like the key point mm. that binds us. Because if you don't have similar values, mm. you can't direct the business on similar principles. Yes. It becomes difficult. Yeah. For mm. example, someone is going to Mbale, you're going to, to, to Lira because yeah. you're, you're taking you're different, different routes. Yeah. So having similar values has helped us be able to craft a similar vision mm -hmm. for this business. Mm. Okay, So that alone, even mm. in terms of... Uh, our faith, yeah, yes, we receive from the same place. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of faith, in terms of uh, we are family oriented. Yeah. Uh, in an interesting way, my business partner is my young brother. Oh. He happens to be actually the CEO of the business. Mm. I love his business acumen, mm -hmm. which he has brought and has really driven the business. Mm. He's also self-driven. Yeah. So with that, I felt like he would actually make a very good partner. Business partner. Yeah. 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 I love that. And, you know, sometimes we're just speaking friends, you know, but then that business acumen, is that person able to take your business where you want it to go? Also strengths and weaknesses. Maybe you've seen his strength, you know yours, then they're going to work yes. well together. That's amazing. So I just want to just follow up on that. How? Because we, we know there are so many interior designers. Mm? How have you been able to make your brand stick out that makes you different or, you know, unique? Yeah, what's that that has made Motiek different and stand out? Well, um, I should say one of the things, just to highlight as Motiek Interiors, mm. we have the two arms of the business. Mm. So we have the interior accessory shops, okay, okay, the stores mm. that people are seeing on Facebook and everywhere, and the mm. social media platforms. Then we have the services, mm. okay? So the services pour into the 
shops mm. where do we start from from the services our eye our okay. skill mm. is what is making us stand out mm. but not only that our focus like i said is values is excellence mm -hmm. because we love excellent work and we ensure and it's work in progress it's a culture we are nurturing we ensure that even the pieces we are putting in our shops mm. when someone puts them in their spaces yeah they bring that life mm. into the space mm. they're excellent pieces mm. that's why many people look at them and even our work yeah excellence is key mm. yeah yeah that's that's great do you have like a marketing strategy that you're using you know because by the time people finish watching this video they should be inspired to start and you know go for it and thrive what are those things that you're doing in your business that have enabled you to thrive and stand the test of time because it's not easy it's not people start easy. businesses after two years we are like mm -mm, i can't do it what are those things that have helped you continue thriving the key thing that has helped us uh thrive we are lifelong learners yeah so we are in school at least we are always polishing up and mm. scaling up but very key we have great business coaches yeah we have both oh, wow. an interior coach mm -hmm. and also a business coach mm. who is able to track and ensure that the things we have committed to do, you're doing them they are holding us accountable yes and this is on a weekly basis mm. a monthly basis mm. to check in mm. if you are going to just start business out of passion mm. you will do it your own way yeah and you get so comfortable mm. but if you have someone who keeps fine-tuning you mm. saying you know what i actually see gaps mm. and with our business coaches some of them we've done we've done services for them mm. so they are able to test us and see where our gaps are. Yeah, are you doing it right? What's lacking? Exactly. Mm. Yes. So for us, it's really the mentorship yeah. and the business coaching. Mm. That is what is keeping us on the go. Mm. Yeah. And let's dive deeper a bit into your business. You know, do you have systems and structures that you use? Because many people, we start businesses and sometimes we're mixing money. You know, what are some of those things in the business specifically that are just helping you manage it well? Okay, we do have a, a number of systems. Mm. Our money, our business money is not our money. Uh -huh. eh? mm. Business money is not our money. Yeah. So that's one thing we have really mm. made, we are clear, we've made yeah. really, really clear yeah. that the business money is, is not, not our you. money. Yeah. We are standing on certain principles. Mm. We ensure that when we receive our profit, mm. there are things we have ensured we put in place. Apart from tithing, because we are Christians, we ensure we have 20% served. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. So we serve 20% of our income. Mm. We ensure the costs are running. Mm. And we have a future investment account. Mm. Yes. Because these guys are serious. We have a future wow. investment account. So we do not open a store unless there's enough money mm. in that future investment account mm. to actually open a store. Yeah. Something we are learning. Mm. Okay? Because we've, we've, we've struggled in certain areas. We've struggled with debt. Mm. And that's one of the things that we've had to, to, to mm. try and sort out. Yeah. We've actually now put a, an account to help us sort out the debts we have mm. as well. Mm. Put out an account for salaries yeah. as well. Yeah. So as we go forward, there are clear processes mm. we have set out to do yeah and those are the things that are helping us run our business amazing yeah. so guys just because you have an interior business you've seen that nice vase yeah you keep it for yourself you don't pay the business yeah so that means if you get some nice vases you pay do you pay the business yes mm. people can be amazed they could come to my space and i don't have many pieces of motek interior yeah. because i can't afford them at right the now. time yeah. i can't afford them at that time I'm also working mm. on piece by piece <laughs> as I work on my home. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. You talked a bit about debt. So many times we want to start businesses and we don't have capital. Hmm? How did you get that capital? Did you save up and things like that? And what has been your debt journey with the business? Is it okay to get a loan? Because sometimes we fear loans. We don't know how to manage them. What would you tell a young lady there in terms of debt and capital well, well actually the biggest challenge for startups mm. is capital yeah you may have the dream you have the zeal you have the idea Passion, the knowledge burning, <laughs> the knowledge but, but. The capital 
okay? Mm. So our capital has really grown through compounding mm -hmm. because we do have the savings going. Mm. But mostly why I really talked about debt because that's something we, in trying to expand, we actually extended and took some debt. Yeah. Some have been eternal. Mm -hmm. We borrowed, uh, my, yeah. my husband is a business partner. Yeah. He's one of the people we borrowed from. Mm. And that's what happens with mothers. Yeah. Most of us have been supported by our spouses. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So that is key to take note mm. because it could actually drown your, pass, your home. Yeah. It could drown your family as you're pouring into the business. the business. So you have to have a balance. Mm. We have agreed that we don't have to run, take a marathon right mm -hmm. now, because we need to clear the debt we have. Mm. So we are taking a step back mm. to clean house first yeah. as we compound our savings and grow our capital. Mm. Because that's where we are. Mm. If, we, we, if we got good opportunities with de we, to get loans at good rates, yeah. We would go for them. Okay. But the loans we've taken have mm. been quite a challenge for yeah. us. So we realized, no, we can't afford that right now. Yeah. So you need to know, how are you going to pay Back. that debt yes. before you even think of taking it? Mm. Otherwise, it can sink you. Yeah. It can sink you. That's true. Yeah. You'd That's rather true. grow your business slowly but, but surely. surely. Mm. Yes. How have you been able to retain clients and keep them, that they keep coming back? Mm. Well, um, I can't say I've not met teachers mm -hmm. on that path. Yes. Um, it's really one of our growth areas right now mm. that we want to work on. Mm. The service industry, because you work with different people yeah. that you bring on board, mm. they can also contribute to your failing in mm. your craftsmanship. Mm. You're relying on a carpenter here. You're relying on a plumber <laughs> here. You're relying... So you, yeah. you, you're dealing with a number of people as an interior designer. Yes. So you're more or less a project manager. Mm. So you could fail certain clients. Mm. But our mantra is we are not living being a client dissatisfied yeah. going forward. Mm. And that's one of the things. We don't want to leave a site without solving the issues mm. at that site. Mm. Because the interior design business is, should not even advertise. You shouldn't advertise. Mm. It should grow organically. Your work should Your speak. gift, your skill should make room for you. Mm. It should organically refer you. Yeah. Yeah, without Amazing. you having to do that. Yeah. So if you fail in delivery, mm. the referrals stop. They stop. They just stop. Yeah. So that is the thing we are working on. Mm. Yeah, we failed some and we've gone back. We have been able to actually go back and do work for those people mm. who have been able to call us back. Mm. And yet we have failed them on the first attempt. I know. Yes. Yeah, because sometimes some things go wrong. Things it's go how you, wrong. It's how you approach it and then, you know, talk to the client. Because you find some people... Things have gone wrong, but they refuse to accept. Exactly. They are blaming you. Ah, it's, it's what you told me, you know. We have met many uh, challenges with carpenters and interior people, you know. But I think just accepting where you've made a mistake and then trying to fill that in. That's amazing. I would just like to just know. Just to say something yeah. about that. One of the things we work with, because we've professionalized our business, mm. we work with contracts. Yeah. We mm. ensure, yes, we give our client a contract to back mm. them up, mm. which is very important because it covers both you and the client. It, and someone may change their mind. They may change their mind, <laughs> and yet they're committed to something. When yeah. they realize, oh, this, is, this looks better, or this, yeah. I would prefer this. Mm. So you ensure you have those contracts mm. drafted before you commit to a work. But I know there are areas where we, we've, they've become gray areas yeah. along the way. Mm. We ensure, if it is taking a loss, to ensure that we satisfy that client, mm. we do that. Mm. We do that to just make sure that that client is satisfied. That's amazing because you will retain them, they will refer you, and that will bring in more business. Now, you mentioned something interesting about our spouses mm? Mm. helping us. How has it been on your side? How does your spouse support you? It could encourage someone there to tell you their spouse about their business. So we're not hiding because you never know they may support you in a way or another. Yeah. Well, um, uh, my husband is my greatest cheerleader. Mm. He actually called out the talent in me. Wow. He could see that I was suffocating the house. <laughs> you get yeah. it? 
somehow I was always repainting the walls. Mm. You're changing the cushions. You're doing this. And then you told me, you know what, Maureen? Yeah. Your gift cannot be contained in this, in this space. <laughs> you need to please let you it need burn. To yeah. To release it somewhere else yeah. so that you're satisfied. Otherwise, we are going to choke in this space. You're ever changing things. You're always changing things. So that was the first call. Mm. And you said, you know what? you need to actually do the interior design because this is passion right here. Yeah. Anyone would call me up, Maureen, we need to go and pick curtains and I'll just find myself gallivanting. Mm. Someone who has a different plan, I, know. I am switching to something yes. different. So with calling, that cheering alone and supporting and mm. giving us, uh, contributing to the first capital yeah. of the business mm -hmm. was such a push for me. Wow. Because that was one of my fears. Mm. I was like, okay, we need money. Mm. Where are we starting from? Mm. He actually poured, mm. uh, made a contribution to that. Mm. And became a business partner as well. Amazing. He's, he's a shareholder and a business partner. Yeah. But also, uh, one of the things that I've noticed that he does, he wears the Mochek t-shirts on Fridays, um, which is yeah. dress down day. Yeah. And his patients are always asking him, what is that about? And he's always referring them. Yeah. He's proud of the business. Mm. He checks on our social media pages. Mm. He looks out for gaps and is like, guys, you oh, need wow. to improve here. Yes. You need to do this. Mm. When I work on a site, he actually drops in to evaluate sometimes and, you know, just give me feedback. Yeah. But you know what? You could improve in this yeah. area. You need to do this. So that has really, really mm. uh, cheered us all. Yeah, and I think I just want to encourage moms out there, involve your partner. Mm? Don't do things alone. Someone is going to pour into you that thing that you didn't even see. Because you know when you're in the frame, when you're in the picture, you don't see the frame properly. So someone outside there and someone close to you who you're able to listen to. Because if your spouse tells you, you're like, oh yeah, I think he, ha he, he has what's best for me, so let me listen. So please involve your partners. Don't hide things, That's you know, true. keep them involved. That's amazing. So I just want to, as we, you know, finalize, what are those tips you'd tell young women, young moms who want to start businesses because we have lots of fear, we don't know what to do. What are those tips you'd share with them so they can rise up and do something about it? Wow, a young ma a mom out there, mm. my advice to you is one, apart from identifying your business mm. that you're passionate about, yeah. identify a mentor. Ay. Identify a mentor, someone who is doing that business right now, mm. okay? And they've walked a certain journey. Mm. It will actually save you a lot. Yeah. It will redeem your time. Mm. It will redeem your resources that you could actually uh, invest and lose. Yeah. You know, you could mm. make losses. Yeah. So my advice would be take time to look out for someone who is doing a similar business you want to start yeah. so that you request them to work with them. Yeah. The other thing is don't rush it. Mm -hmm. If you need to take time, it's okay to actually take time to go and work for someone running that oh, business. Oh, to learn. So that you learn. Mm. Invest that time mm. to learn. Give it three years. Wow. Because in three years, you could have started a business and, and it crashed. And it crashed. Yes, you wasted three years. Three years. Yeah. The same capital. Do so it right the do? first time. Do it right. Many of us, especially this young generation, yeah. we are rushing. We just want quick to, money. Eh, <laughs> quick money. We just see numbers. You meet yeah. someone and they're just talking numbers. Yeah. First stay put, mm. go out, mm. and first work for someone. Yeah. It's okay to invest that time. Mm. It's okay to invest that time. It will help you redeem time for your business. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. If people want to reach you, where do they find more take? Let them know. Okay, you can find more take interiors in Naria, mm -hmm. opposite Oryx Fuel Station. Yeah. There's a building called Micah's House. We are right up there. That's where one of our stores is. Mm. Or along uh, Chihuatule, Chigoa Road. Mm. We are next to Sal's Hotel. We have another location right there. Please visit us. Yeah. Check out our Facebook pages, mm -hmm. Instagram mm. for any help. Yeah. We will be delighted to serve you. Guys, don't just be in a funny space. These guys can just make your space so much better. Thank you for being here. Yes, my name is Lisa Kusima. I know you've been inspired. <laughs>